of the evening. This is for the Ultimate Fighting Championship 7 Championship. Once again, your referee will be Big John McCarthy. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, from the War Memorial here in Buffalo, New York, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first to my left, a black belt in the art of trap fighting. He's 25 years old and he stands in at 6 feet 8 and weighs 300 pounds. From Sunnyville, California, by way of the icy north of Fairbanks, Alaska, he is the polar bear. And his opponent across the octagon, six feet one, 210 pounds, four-time Brazilian Muay Thai champion, state heavyweight boxing champion, and reigning Brazilian Valley Tudo champion, undefeated in bare knuckle matches from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, the king of the streets, Marco. The winner gets the UFC 7 belt and a trip to the ultimate, ultimate December 16th in Denver. This is what you came here to for. To meet the you likes ready? of Takarov, Abbott, well, Hackney, here, Jenna, Severin, Let's and Benito. Here we go. Finals of UFC 7. And Barlins, as usual, streaks across the octagon. Hua shows some punching and a kick to the body. Oh, nice combinations. Kicks and punches, one after the other. And you have to remember, Ruas has some boxing talent. Barlow's 300 pounds, Ruas 210. This just might be too much quickness for Barlow's. You know, Hoo-Hoss is uh, the best puncher kicker that I've seen in here so far. That little demonstration there was, was the best kicking and punching I've seen in the event. This is what Hoo-Hoss got involved in in his last fight against Bardu, standing on, up work. against the fence. Beautiful job of keeping himself balanced. Watch Hoo-Hoss lift that leg that takes away any kind of trip Barlins can have. Barlins beginning to punch with the right hand. I just think Barlins is not going to have the experience to deal with Hoo-Hoss. I mean, if he gets him on the ground, I think it's going to be, uh, eventually he's going to make a mistake. Again, a kick from Hoo-Hoss. Already in the nostril area, but he usually bleeds from there. Not unusual to see that early on. Well, it says that Hujas is a Thai boxer, a Muay Thai, and, and he's demonstrating it now. He's kicking the front leg, the thigh, which is a Thai let's technique. Go, go. And you notice now Barlin changed his stance. He's now got that leg back. You got to wonder if that had an effect. Oh, I'm sure it did. I'm sure it did. That thigh is very vulnerable. Look at how red that thigh is. If you can see that. On your screen, just above Barlin's left knee, there's a big area of red. Ooh, left cross. Ooh, showing some fine boxing skills. David against Goliath. Barlin's with a kick. His punches are slow. Barlin's punches are slow. He's Awful wide, slowly too. too. Another kick by Barlin's. Got to take the feet out from underneath Ooh. Don, do you think Ooh is trying? Oh, look at this. Doesn't have it. Do you think Uas is making Barlin spend a lot of energy chasing him and all that? Now all that effort trying to pick Uas up. You got to wonder if he uh, is going to start to run out of gas here fairly soon. Well, I think he would have never let go of that hold if he if he, did, if he was in condition to hold him because he had him around the neck. But he also had that arm in there, Don. That's a front headlock, not a guillotine. Barlin's kicking. Now, Ruas initiates uh, tying up. You got to wonder now if Barlin's starting to suck gas. And oh, I toe guess. stopping. I love it. That same toe popping we saw earlier. Remember, Barlin's had the flu yesterday, and uh, he may be short of gas. He's also a big fella at 300. That's right. His mouth is wide open. When you see that, you know you're gasping for air. The mouthpiece might fall out any minute. That's a sure sign of exhaustion. Oh, 
Shuash now has to just maintain enough pressure to keep him tired and just pick his openings and continue to retreat. I guess Garlic can only go so far. Exactly. 3.30 in. I think it's a mistake for Ruas just to let him sit there against the fence. He should move him around, make him have to move. Spend energy. The more energy he spends, the easier it will be to take him out. Barnes does not want to end up on the ground. I don't think. Not against, not against Ruas. trying to sneak around behind. Who knows what kind of submission he'll be sneaking to throw it on here. I don't really know what he would be trying to do from behind. So maybe take him down or get behind his... Get an arm around his neck. I don't know what he's... Uh, why would Barlitz throw a left hand right there? There he goes. Right behind, behind him. There Barlitz hanging on desperately. And now he tries to stop, but much too smart. Jumping on him is who are. That protects your toes. Missing with the elbows, he's catching them with the tricep, not the bone part of the elbow. Marlon does not want to go down. If he goes down, it's going to be like a like a bus dropping. Almost now five minutes. I'm not sure what who else went for to get in this position. I mean, unless he's just uh, thinking of taking him down, maybe from here. There's some uniqueness with that arm over the top of the octagon, latching out to the fence from the reverse side. Now he's got both hands on the octagon. I think it's the octagon that's holding him up at this point. I think so, too. If he loses the grip of the octagon, he might be rolled backwards. Right, he's going to be taken down if he does. How long can he hold on, and what can Hulas do to soften him up? Trying to wrap the leg around Marlins. Oh, that one had to hurt. Oh, oh, that one hurt a lot. Once again, it's countering of feet. Foot for foot. Oh. And a smashing foot drive by Huas. Well, this is a new form of striking here. Foot stomp. It's pretty effective, as, as we've seen tonight. Who, I, I really don't know what Uas is trying to do. I imagine he's thinking, hey, Barlin will let go of the fence, but he's not. The oh. crowd is getting up and enjoying it now. Barlin's trying to work that left arm back and elbow Uas, but Uas won't let go of his gut. Those are really missing. You can see Uas just watching that arm. And he's low enough because he's only 6'1", he's 7 inches smaller, Don. It's almost an advantage here because he can't get nailed in the head. Right. Well, Marlon's now coming off a little bit of that fence. One arm over, one arm latched in the middle. Just trying to get the big man off of that fence. Well, if he gets off the fence, the next thing is they're going to be on the ground. And I really think the violence is going to be lost there, Don. Nuas knees him to the back. Another knee. Not much damage, but nuisance like. I mean, this is like a little man with a tiny little axe trying to chop down a redwood. <laughs> Well, you know, you can chop down the biggest redwood a little at a time. <laughs> That's exactly what he's trying to do. It's a smart tack. Come on, let's go! He does only have 20 minutes. One would have to question Barlin's stamina, but by leaving him on the fence like this, he's not burning much energy. He doesn't have to move very far. He gets to hang on, keep his balance. And really, when you start to fatigue, maintaining your balance becomes so difficult. It burns so much more energy and, of course, frustration. Oh, great shot of the fighters there. 
and you can see the elbows just unable to land squarely because of the low center of gravity of Huas. Huas trying to lug somebody off a fence. And Marlin showing sheer strength. Well, Huas is dealing with a lot of weight on top of that strength. I mean, he's a strong man, but there's a lot of weight being pulled around out there. That's one warning. Sure is. That's a warning. Next warning is a reset. You, know, you almost want to think that he wants to jump up on his back and go for a, you know, a choke. Throw both legs in around the waist, the reach up around that neck, Come and just on, go wherever Barlins wants to go and just maintain the choke hold. Marvelous crowd here in Buffalo. They, they go with what they want, and they can change in a minute. Get, up, get over here. Go, they go, are go, real go. fight fans, let's and go, now we get a reset from John McCarthy at 9-10. Nine, nine minutes, 10 seconds in unofficially. A reset. You ready? You ready? Let's go. Get it on. And here they go again. Now, this is burning a lot more energy for Barlins. He's got to move. He's got to pace. He's trying to think. And if he gets frustrated, that just compounds the key. Accelerates it. A different tactic by Barlin. Hands up, looking like a boxer. But he, he sometimes switches to southpaw and doesn't even realize. Oh, good kick answer by Barlin. A counter kick. All on the dragon. I know what happens is when you've been hurt to the leg, you want to hit the other guy in the leg. How's his technique? Uh, not good, but uh, go. Come you know, on. his attitude's good. You have to wonder if that was a mistake by Uas, letting Varland rest against the fence. Well, I'm not sure he was letting him. I, I think he was... He could have let him go and started right. fighting again. Look at that there for almost five minutes. Right. Time-wise, it could have been a bad strategic move. Varland's playing a little bit of attitude on Huas. Another solid leg kick. You can see the bruises on his leg. He's hurt. That thigh, he's not going to be able to walk tomorrow on that leg. Heavily bruised is the left thigh of Barlins. Those are from the kicks by Huas, which are more technique-like, more precise. And I think Barlins' greatest strength is his sheer will. He needs to lift that leg up. You know, it's a very simple block to block that. All he needs to do is lift his leg Look up. Look at the welts on that leg. Well, I've been there myself a few times. But all he needs to do is lift that left leg up when the kick, just like that. That's all he, there it is right there. That's the block. He won't get hit on that thigh if he just does that. There it is. Nicely it's, done. Can Marcos now, as he lifts that leg in anticipation of that side kick, go to the other knee and just strike the posted knee? Or why not throw his only one right hand, Don? Well, the reason he can't do that, go back to the back leg, is uh, it, it, it's too far away. It's not the same level. It's not the front. Grappling. Back to boxing. Interesting fight here. Come on, gentlemen, let's go, let's go. Well, the Japanese might have called him the most complete fighter, but... Oh, boy, that yeah. left leg, is he can't stand on it much longer, he really ate a big kick there. He's got to block them there. He's got to block them. That's all he has to do. It's very simple. There it is. Doing a good job at it, isn't he? Well, but now he is, but it's a you know a day late, dollar short. You know, he's taking a lot of punishment on that left leg. There it is again. And the alternative for him is to go to the mat, where he knows that Huas is most dangerous, and that's not a good option. Oh my, Huas firing leg kicks at will, and using his speed and motion to keep Barlins away. This is the most effective leg kicking we have seen in the UFC. Absolutely. But as you can see, it is effective. I mean, you can see now that a strike to the thigh does some damage. Now he goes the other way. And that's not a bad idea because you won't know which way to turn. Before long, he'll be the leading tower of Varlins. Now, the best thing Varlins could do is back up and let Huas come to him at this point. The reason he can get those leg kicks in easily is he's walking forward, walking right into them. 
sit back and just counter a little bit. Just sit back and let Hujas come to him. Let him make the fight. Oh.